Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're talking about is a subject that people will be like, why are you talking about that? Okay. Is, is this actually a good time to buy investment properties or buy properties in Florida? We just had the hurricane. We just had Hurricane Helene. We had, we had Hurricane Milton. Mm -hmm. And the investors came out and you know, along the West Coast over here, like oh, yeah. a little south of us, Gulf Harbors, Hudson, where we are right now. Yeah. They came out in droves, and these people are panic selling. They really are. They're like, you know what? We want out. We can't take it anymore. We want out. And a lot of them are selling. And me personally, stay till the end. I'm, I'm going to tell you what my opinion is about this. But, you know, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint. I think they're making a mistake. And I'm going to explain why at the end, why it's a why it's a mistake, mm -hmm. because it's too <clears throat> it's too raw right now. You know, it's too emotional right now. You're, you're making an emotional decisions. <sighs> that's that's true, and and it's never good to make a decision when you're over emotional, right? It's hard. It's it's your house. Yeah, so and your house say your house got destroyed. Right, and it's like there's personal belongings in it you know, your stuff may be out on the street, whatever your case or your situation is, it's, this has been an, a, an unbelievably emotional, trying situation. No matter how much or how little you were impacted, it's still very, very emotional. Just going through the storm is emotional and the whole lead up and, 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 and being over, your friends are affected, is just a lot of stuff. So it's, you know, taking a breath is really important, you know, especially when it comes to your home because, Typically, that is your largest piece of, you know, wealth that you have is your is your home. True. And you really want to look at it from multiple angles and just be unbelievably cautious if you are selling, if that warrants it. Well, the whole thing is, I've been following some Facebook groups about uh -huh. these groups here, and um, you know, these investors are ruthless. They they come up, you know, some of them, and yes, I, I'll tell you what I think if it's a good time to invest right now in Florida towards the end of this, but some of them are ruthless and, you know, they act like they're everybody's buddies. Now they're, you know, their house just got destroyed. All their debris is still on the street. Mm -hmm. And then you have somebody knocking on the door saying, hey, you know what? Don't worry about repairing it. Here's a cash offer. Just walk away. Right. I think personally, and I know a lot of investors and I deal with a lot of investors are going to say, Jimmy, why are you even saying that negative thing about investors? But I think they're trying to take advantage of some victims of the hurricanes. What do you think? Yeah, there's whenever there's a natural disaster or a situation like this, you know, there's going to be people and groups that come out and that are opportunistic, you know, on the, the criminal side of things. And you just have to be cautious with that and make sure everything is on the up and up. Um, you know, particularly when it comes to your insurance and signing benefits and this, that, and the other, and then transferring your home is another big one. You got to make sure that you use like your title company or your, as the seller, a, a well-known, or you have your own, you know, lawyer that helps you navigate yeah, don't, that process. Don't, yeah. Don't do like a quick claim deed and, you know, this, do something yeah. like that. And then utilizing, and just, 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 again, this is just my opinion. And again, most of the people are you know, the, the investors are legitimate, but you could have people that aren't and they've, you know, I don't know the, all the little ins and outs of that because I'm not a criminal, but just be cautious before you do anything and make sure you really, really understand what's happening. But, the, but there are a lot of bad characters out there. I'll yeah. give you guys a quick story. Okay. It has nothing to do with real estate. Just my lift on this property went underwater, the motors mm -hmm. went underwater, okay? And they burnt out, and they burnt out before, and they were like between 250 and 295 bucks. Two, three days after the storm, I called around to get the motors, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously, and one person said to me, he goes, yeah, it's 1200 bucks. I'm like, 1200 bucks? <laughs> yeah. It's like, they're usually just under 300 bucks. And then I called another person, it's like 900 bucks, you know? And I understand there's laws against that and you can report that, you know, for, but, but now, you know, I found somebody that actually sold it to me for 265, which so is, sold it to you like they should be selling. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. there's people like that, but I literally saw these investors in one of the neighborhoods walking from house to house to yeah. house and knocking on the door and saying, Hey, we're willing to give you a cash offer for this house right now. You don't have to do nothing. 
and some people are in there and they're talking to, to them and the, you know, the wife is crying, the husband's all upset, you know, and I'm like, I felt like going up to him and say, don't do anything right now. Right. You know, in certain circumstances, honestly, I mean, that's, you could be hoping that that happens to you. You know, that may be the best situation for you, but in a majority of circumstances, this storm is where, what, this is day eight after it made landfall. And like you, it's, we barely had enough time to process this. And, you know, you, you, you haven't done all your due diligence yet. You haven't done your research yet. Um, you know, to, to, are you able to fix what are the, you know, what's the possible outcomes are different just so you have options. Right. But don't you think that they're like, they're like am ambulance chasers a little bit, or you think the investors are just doing what they, what they're meant to do. Well, in some instances that feels like they're, you know, ambulance chasers per se, but I mean, on the other side, when you, I try to look at both sides, you know, they, that's, that's what they're doing. That's their job. Yeah. Do you me know? a favor. You, you guys consider subscribing. It really helps on the channel. The channel has been growing a lot. Thanks to you guys. And I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you could just hit that like and share button and give it a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Like I said, but here's the deal, Bill. So if somebody calls you and says, Bill, you know, find me some investment properties, go, I want to buy, because I see it all the time now on, on Facebook, say the neighborhood Gulf Harbors. Mm -hmm. Go there and find me two or three houses I could buy. Now you're the realtor. Are you going to go knock on their house, say, hey, I got a buyer for these houses? So it, there's a couple things with that, because that's an old played out. Right, like, but right now this is a disaster. Yeah. So now it's being kind of revamped. And, you know, there's rules. If you don't really have a buyer, you could technically get no. in trouble if you don't have a buyer. But, but say you do have a buyer, yeah. you know, because I'm mm -hmm. sure because a couple of the people that were knocking on the doors were realtors. Yeah, because they're going to go out and they're going to start headhunting for that investment property instead of sending out mailers and, you know, Google campaigns and things like that. They're just going to go knock on the door. Uh, canvassing a neighborhood is not an old, you know, that's an old school tactic, whether it's a, uh, a natural disaster or not canvassing a neighborhood, you know, knocking doors. You know? So do you think this is a golden opportunity for investors? Am I overblowing this that I don't think people should be approached when they just got their house destroyed seven days ago and, you know, asking them to sell it? Am I being naive and, mm. and, and no, for me, I would not go and start knocking on everybody's door six or seven days, eight days after the devastation. It's like, it's too raw. Um, it just, it doesn't fit my personality and I'm just not going to do it. It, right, it just, good. it's just, that's, there's someone for everybody and there's, it's just, that's not my gig. I'm not going to do that. Do I believe that certain amount of people actually could feel relief from that door knock in that situation? Of course, you know, because there are people that they really need. I've helped people in the past, you know, to sell to investors because they absolutely needed it whether it was cold calling or mailers or, you know, Google, whatever the case was that uh, drummed up the deal. Um, and, and they truly needed the help, you know, and that's what we're here to do is to help people, but I'm just not. So <laughs> let me ask you a me. question. Um, you know, this, people watching this, they know you're the realtor. Say they're going to reach out to you now and say, hey, Bill, you know, find me some, I'm sure that people are going to reach out and say, Bill, find me some investment properties. Mm -hmm. Because I think, here, here's my opinion. I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit earlier. I think it's not a great time to buy your primary house, you know, that you, you're going to live in for mm -hmm. a long time. Um, because I still think, you know, there's too much uncertainty depending on the jobs and I won't get into all that. But I think it's a really, really good opportunity to get to some investment properties. And I'm not talking about the kind of investment properties that um, have just been destroyed unless they already listed it and they made it public that, you know, there's, there's a few of those popping up too. Like if you oh, pull yeah. the listings up right now mm -hmm. in Hudson and, um, I saw three, maybe four new listings just in this area saying handyman house or, you know, right. Needs rehab. Obviously we know it got flooded. Right. Yeah. And sold as these. Mm -hmm. But those are for sale and those are fair game because they actually, Put it up for sale to want to sell oh, of it. course yeah and i mean there's there's other ways to do that whether you list it yourself um you know you got to deal with all the phone calls and everything but we're not going to go down that road we're just talking you could list it yourself right 
if if that was what fit your needs or you could answer the door and then accept a, at least accept and entertain the offer that the uh, investor is making now if this is one of those things where they're like well i need you to decide by tonight and they're pressuring you to get it i would say in my opinion that that's a giant red flag and i would say no we're this is a big deal and we're not just this is not getting done on the uh the doorstep of a you know and we're quick signing stuff over um, to you, obviously the, the process takes a little longer cause you got to go through, you know, the, the title company and everything. But, um, I just would want to make sure that everything was done legitimately. Right. I mean, this is just my opinion and everybody could disagree with me and comment below, but I think that if you could manage and you're okay just to manage till things calm down or, you know, when you can think clearer and then say, okay, I'm going to sell the house or I'm not going to sell the house. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that are going to fix the, it's going to, they're going to fix the house and then they're going to put it up for sale, which is fine. It's cool, especially if you have a mortgage and you have insurance, you know, you have to get it done. Um, some people are going to try to lift their houses. Some people, I heard, they're going to knock it down and try to build a stealth house. Right. There's, so, there's just other options. There's other options. Yeah. If you like the property, like here, where I'm building, I'm going to be 18 feet up in the air. So it's like, whatever. Right. You're not going to have to worry about the flood per se, you know, and, and sometimes you just don't know your options. So it's better to have at least a consultation to know what your options are. So you're really, truly making an informed decision. This is it's this situation right now is no different than if you're getting ready to purchase a home or sell your home. But yeah, but I, I, investors, certain ones are good, but certain ones are just freaking they're trying to take advantage of the situation. And basically that's, you know, yeah, some investors that are watching this video are probably going to reach out to me and say, what the hell are you talking about? That's what we do, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just like taking advantage of people that are down in their luck and don't know what to do next. Right. It's, it's, it's not cool. No, it's not. We need some humanity before we need to worry about other things. And believe me, there's always investors. It's not like this is a one-time thing and then it's done. It's not like this is a, you know, a fall sale. And, you know, once these investors pack up their vehicles and they go back to wherever they came from, that they're not going to be there anymore. Investors are always around. They're just this is just ideal for them to come door to door and pedal their goods. All right. So let's get back to the premise. Mm -hmm. Is this a good t in your opinion? Like my opinion is that to buy your primary house that you want to live in, you know, and just maybe it's not the best time right now to buy that house. But for investment purposes, I think other than the hurricane people that put, already put it up for sale there's people that are leaving florida now of course because of insurance oh, because yeah. of property taxes because of jobs yep you know so and they and they want out not that they got affected some of them didn't get affected from the hurricane but they mentally got affected by the hurricane right or financially because this is going to be everything just because your house wasn't wiped out or damaged during the storm that doesn't mean that your place of employment wasn't damaged or affected in some way where they've either had to cut back or you, it was destroyed or heavily damaged in the storm and you don't have a place to go to work that, that you know so it's, and, it's not just your personal property like i talked to one person and they said listen I, i'm paying outrageous insurance costs right now mm -hmm. and it's not like insurance is going to get better now right now no matter where you are in florida you know and mm -hmm. if and you might not got hit this time but you might get you there's always a time that you may get hit. I don't care where you are in Florida. Well, there's always, no matter where you are, there's always an, there's, there's some sort of an issue for the most part, wherever you go. And I don't, I'm not saying that we should advocate living life scared. You know, you no, gotta live your life. I, I'm, not, sure. I'm not saying that, but some people are saying, you know what? I didn't get affected this time, but I might get affected the last time. Yeah. It's just, they were teetering on leaving Florida anyways. Right. And this two storms might have been enough to push them over and say, hey, while we get good money for our house, why don't we? Right, while we still can. While we still can. That's basically going off the premise of that they think the economy and the housing economy, two different things, mm -hmm. economy and housing economy, are they're, they're, while they're connected, they are two separate things, is, is going to come tumbling down because of the storm. So I, I just, you know, to kind of circling back to where we were going with this, do I think now is a good time? It really always depends on your situation. If you've been damaged, you have to look at things from a different perspective. If your home was not damaged and you're con you were considering leaving and you want to leave now more than ever, different story. You know, you've, you, everybody has their own motivation for why they want to buy or sell. Um, 
are, are you willing to wait and see what happens with the economy? Because we're all real easy. Right. It's easy to say that the economy is going to crash and I'm going to save a couple thousand dollars. But what if it doesn't? And what if the prices continue to increase? Because this is just the coast. The state of Florida is huge. Oh, shoot. So yeah. like interest rates are low. New construction is offering all kinds of crazy incentives right now. So maybe now's that time to make that leap where you're like, I'm done with the coast and you're going to move inland a little bit more. Yes. Does Do you always get affected? Even we, like I said, we got affected out in Wesley Chapel. Nowhere near what it was like here, of course, because we're not on the coast. Right. You know, but there's still damage everywhere, but just not to the same magnitude. So you have to really start to dissect your motivation, why you want to leave, where you're going to go. And then what, what things are you moving to? Are you moving to somewhere that's got blizzards and maybe you're okay with that? It just depends on your tolerance level. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Bill, at the same time, it, answer this question. Do you think it's a good time to start investing in some investment properties? There are definitely opportunities out there right now. So that's what I'm just saying. Purchase. purchase or invest. Right. But, yeah. you know, like I think the investment, I think we, you know, I think things are crash. Oh, I won't use the word crash and chilling to the way that there's some good deals out there. I've been looking. There, there are some really, really good deals. Well, yeah, there's a lot of homes that are damaged. So those are going to be typically your best deal. But then you better know how to do the construction or have a really good team put together. Kind of like we talked about in that one, I want to become an investor video that yeah, we did. Yeah. Because you better know how the, and then what are the rules because of the amount, there's a certain amount of, um, if you, you change a certain percentage of the home, you have to bring it up to the new code. Codes. So if that house needs to be brought up to the new codes, it's not like I just pick and choose the code. We're talking everything. Right. So that good deal may have just cost you a lot of money. And you're not actually having so a basically deal. pretty much do do your homework you know, before you you know consider anything. Anyways, that's today's video. Do me a favor, consider watching this video right here. I picked it out just for you guys. Comment below and tell us if you think it's getting to the point that now it's a good time to start investing. Like we hit rock bottom, okay? Because things you know there's more and more house on on the bottom you know sitting on the market now and some people because of these hurricanes are getting desperate and they do want to sell mm -hmm. so maybe this is a good opportunity tell us what you guys think thank you for watching do me a favor like always consider subscribing it really helps out the channel and it really motivates us and you guys have been great thanks we'll see you on the next video bye bye